JK and Yin were on their way to Jisoo's residence, JK's older sister, who had just returned to Korea after six months in Japan for a business trip. They had been invited to a barbecue party at her house, and Yin couldn't wait to meet her sister-in-law. Upon arrival, they were greeted warmly by Jisoo, who welcomed them with smiles and cheerful chatter. Jian Jisoo was a delightful, warm and friendly woman, quite the opposite of her younger brother, who was known for his stiffness and cold demeanor. Yin deeply admired her sister-in-law, considering her to be a perfect role model, beautiful, kind, educated, with a successful career. However, despite being 35 years old, Jisoo remained unmarried, at least. There was one similarity between JK and Jisoo, both siblings were workaholics. JK and Yin greeted their father with bows when they met him at the gathering. Son, I heard you've been working very hard lately. You even secured a contract with the JS group. Mr. Jian patted JK's back, showing his pride. It's all thanks to the hard work of our employees as well. Despite his cold demeanor, JK deeply appreciated those who worked with him. He held on to his mother's words when she was still alive. When you show respect to others, they will respect you in return. When will you to give me grandchildren? I'm getting impatient. Hearing this question, JK and Yin exchanged uncertain glances, unsure how to respond. Now, Yin was with Jisoo, while JK sat and chatted casually with some of Jisoo's guests. The barbecue party was quite luxurious, yet it maintained a relaxed atmosphere. On the terrace near the swimming pool, guests could enjoy the yellowish hues of the late afternoon sky. Jisoo, who had unintentionally spotted JK gazing at his wife from a distance, couldn't help but tease Yin. Is everything going well? Yin frowned, looking at her sister-in-law. JK's treatment of you, is he treating you well? Jisoo knew JK's character well, and she only wanted to make sure her brother treated his wife properly. He's very kind, although sometimes, I get tired of his coldness. Jisoo chuckled softly. But in the bedroom, he's not cold, is he? Or is he very passionate? Yin blushed deeply, smacking Jisoo's arm playfully. That's enough, Uni. Jisoo laughed and left Yin, rushing toward a tall man who had just arrived and was sporting a wide grin. Yin squinted when she looked at the man, his face seemed familiar, and when he directed his gaze at her, she felt like she recognized him. V? How is it possible? She stared at the man in front of her with an incredulous look. Are you going to keep staring at me like this? You're scaring me, Yin. He just displayed his typical grin, a grin that Yin considered as the grin of a devil. It was still hard to believe, but after seeing all of this, Yin was convinced that the man in front of her was Kim V, her senior from high school. Initially, this man had left a bad impression on Yin's past. Ah, uh, seeing him again after all this time made Yin remember the bad memories of her high school days. This man was once a Casanova at school. Many girls had a crush on him. That's because he loved to play with women. He often changed his girlfriends, and Yin was one of his victims. V and Yin had dated, but it was short-lived puppy love. Yin was the one who ended it because she couldn't stand these commitment issues. After they graduated, they lost all contact. How can someone like you be acquainted with Jisuni? You're talking about me as if I'm a scoundrel. Well, you are. Well, well, but you did have a crush on me back then, didn't you? What? Watch your attitude. I'm already married. V nodded, pretending to be innocent, then he took a piece of grilled meat and put it in his mouth. V looked more like a scoundrel trying to tease a married woman. Yin was about to move away from where she was when V's hand reached out and held her wrist. It seems like you're happy with your marriage? V stood up from his seat and looked into Yin's clear eyes. They were still the same. Her clear eyes still made V feel warm when he looked at her, and he had to admit that Yin had become even more beautiful. I think JK is a very good man. Of course, much better than you. I'll be back in Japan in a week. So? I just want to apologize to you for the past. Everything is in the past. Can't we reminisce a little? There's no need to dwell on something bad. But still, you were hurt because of me. He smiled, one of his hands raised to gently pat the top of Yin's head, and there was no resistance from her. Unbeknownst to them, JK continued to watch them. Bastard, how dare his damn hand touch my wife. The sparks of jealousy were beginning to show in JK's eyes. He might look calm, but his jaw was tight beneath that stern face. JK gripped the wine glass tightly in his hand. I saw her in a magazine, she's very pretty. Yin was referring to Matsumoto, V's wife. Yes, of course. If she weren't pretty, how could I marry her? You act so handsome. 
You, speaking so rudely, aren't you aware that I am indeed handsome? V, spoke while slicking his hair back with his fingers. You should be regretting letting go of a sweet and handsome guy like me. Yin just shook her head and then burst into a soft laugh, her senior with all his antics. Ugh, was Yin really attracted to this man back then? It sounds like you two are having an interesting conversation. What were you talking about? Jisoo joined the conversation between V and Yin. Oh, nothing important. We were just discussing trivial matters. Is that so? Jisoo smiled and threw a curious look. Yes, we were talking about our high school days. Jisoo nodded her head. Ah, uh, I almost forgot that you both went to the same high school. How did you know Uni? V, mentioned it. I know everything about you too. What, everything? Yin gave V, a stern look. He scratched his head and put on an innocent face. Yes, including the fact that you used to date. Jisoo's remark made Yin frown. You're scary. Are you going to kill me or something? Oh, I hope not. V winked at Yin mischievously. You're, uh, Yin, JK's sudden call caught Yin off guard. She stopped her irritation toward V and turned to look back at JK, who was approaching her with one hand in his side pocket. He came and immediately grabbed Yin's waist, pulling her into his embrace. Yin was taken aback by his sudden display of affection. Don't get any funny ideas. JK whispered briefly in Yin's ear, as if he understood what was going on in his wife's mind. Yin frowned and immediately lowered her head in embarrassment, realizing that she had unintentionally put on a foolish expression in front of JK. Oh my, you two are really something. Jisoo, who witnessed the affectionate scene between the husband and wife, pretended to sneer playfully, intending to tease them. Wow, hey, Mrs. Jian, your husband seems quite possessive. V raised an eyebrow, flashing a smile at Yin, who responded with a fierce glare. Keep quiet. Yin glared fiercely at V. Huh. It's just an act. It needs to be clarified that it's an act. Yin was well aware of JK's affectionate gesture. Her husband was trying to show everyone that their marriage was going well. Well, at least that's what Yin thought. Without knowing the truth. I've heard a lot about you. Now, V smiled warmly at JK, greeting him. JK nodded in response. You seem like the type of person who really dislikes it when someone touches your prized possession, am I right? V chuckled softly. It was a subtle jab at JK, who acted cute in the sense that he appeared calm but was actually seething with anger. Jealousy? It was evident. As a man, V understood JK's possessive behavior towards Yin as if marking the girl in his embrace as his own. You have a keen eye. JK replied flatly. Jisoo and Yin exchanged glances. Yin's face showed signs of discomfort, sensing an unpleasant aura from JK. Evening, 9.30 p.m. Yin sat in front of a vanity table, tying her hair loosely, exposing her slender neck. Her face, freshly washed, looked radiant without makeup. She sighed deeply, glancing at the wall clock. Yin left the room and walked towards JK's office door, her steps somewhat hesitant. Upon reaching the door, she took a deep breath before deciding to knock. Inside, JK sat in his working room chair, staring at a stack of documents in his hand. JK halted his activities as soon as he heard the door open slowly, revealing Yin standing there. What's the matter? Would you like me to make some hot chocolate? Yin asked with a smile, receiving a brief nod from JK. Five minutes later, Yin Rei entered JK's office with a cup of hot chocolate. She entered and closed the door behind her. The sweet scent of fruit-flavored candies wafted in the air as Yin approached a few steps. Why aren't you asleep? JK? Asked Yin, staring at her. His gaze was sharp and flat as he leaned against his chair, exhaling softly. I'm not sleepy yet. JK stood up from his seat, waiting for Yin as she approached. Is your work not finished? Yin stopped in her tracks when JK stood in front of her. Yes, why? Well, it's just. Shouldn't you avoid working late tonight? Yin smiled gently as she handed a cup of hot chocolate to JK. He accepted it, blowing on the hot surface and taking small sips. You're acting like this again. JK's demeanor remained cold, and his sharp gaze pierced Yin's beautiful face. Is it not allowed? Is it wrong for a wife to worry about her husband? Yin's tone turned serious. She just wanted to make JK feel comfortable. She wanted to be a good wife. But why did it seem like JK had been getting colder towards her since they returned from the barbecue event? Despite her efforts to lighten the mood, JK seemed to be paying less attention to her. JK chuckled cynically, placing the cup of hot chocolate on the nearby table. He ran his fingers along his jawline, took a step closer to Yin, closing the distance. 
The woman held her breath momentarily, her heart beating abnormally. It always happened like this. Why did her body freeze up, rendering her unable to move every time she was this close to JK? Have you forgotten your boundaries? There are no boundaries between husband and wife. Yin responded without caring about JK's intense gaze. Is that so? But it seems like you've forgotten the boundaries when it comes to other men who aren't your husband. JK pulled Yin's waist, making her tiny frame press against his. It seems like you're getting bolder with your words after I've slept with you, huh? Yin closed her eyes, then opened them slowly. She gathered all her courage to not falter under JK's intense stare. She had held back enough. Can't you understand even a little bit? I've been trying to act like a proper wife, but your behavior. And also, what's your problem with me? I feel like my interactions with him are still within reason. We're not alone, and it's in an open space. What do I need to hide, if there's nothing to hide? Yin lowered her head, tears welling up in her eyes. Damn it, she hated crying in front of JK. JK didn't like seeing Yin cry either. Are you done talking? JK released his grip on Yin's waist and stepped back, turning away from her. I told him earlier that you're better than him, but it seems like I was wrong. Oh, so he should be better than me then? Not necessarily. He's a flirty guy who likes teasing women, but at least back then, when I was with him, I was never ignored like this. He always acknowledged my presence and treated me like I mattered. It seems like you're really sad about parting with him. Why don't you just go back to his arms? Unfortunately, he's already married, and I don't want to be a homewrecker. Maybe if he weren't married, ah, forget it. Yin left JK's office, leaving him standing there with clenched fists. You've gone too far, JK. I've given you plenty of time, but you haven't appreciated me at all. Unconsciously, tears welled up in Yin's eyes again. Now she felt sick of it all. Why does loving her own husband feel so tormenting, even though they've been strengthened by their wedding vows? Fine, from now on, I won't care anymore. JK sat at his office desk surrounded by stacks of paperwork. He was supposed to be focusing on his tasks, but his concentration kept wavering. The argument with his wife, Yin, from last night played on a loop in his mind. Her saddened face, her teary eyes, it was all too vivid. Yin had compared him to her ex-boyfriend, and it had hit JK hard. He couldn't shake the feeling that maybe he had hurt Yin more than he realized with his distant behavior. Could she be hurting as much as her words suggested? As JK shuffled through the papers, his mind kept drifting back to that moment. He remembered Yin's words as if they were etched in his mind. When I was with him, I was never ignored like this. He always acknowledged my presence and treated me like I mattered. The fact that Yin felt more appreciated with her ex-boyfriend than with him not at JK's conscience. He tried to push the thoughts away and focus on his work, but the turmoil within him persisted. Maybe it was time to reevaluate his priorities and his relationship with his wife. JK knew he had to make amends and show Yin how much she meant to him before it was too late. The weight of his own actions weighed heavily on his shoulders as he continued to sift through the paperwork on his desk, each document a reminder of the distance he had allowed to grow between them. Club that night was pulsating with loud music, colorful lights flashing all around. The party atmosphere was in full swing, and Yin and her friend Lisa were enjoying the night. They danced, laughed, and occasionally ordered drinks. However, as the night grew later, Yin started to appear drunk. She spoke incoherently, creating nonsensical sentences, and her eyes emitted a vacant look that worried Lisa. Lisa tried to embrace Yin and take her to a quieter corner. Yin, you've had too much to drink. You need to stop now. Yin just laughed senselessly without any apparent reason. She had clearly crossed her alcohol limit. Lisa knew it was time to persuade Yin to go home. Come on, Yin, let's go home now. You've had enough. Home? Where? This party was great. Lisa couldn't force her any further, so she decided to take Yin home firmly. They left the club, and Lisa drove Yin to her house. Upon arriving in front of Yin's house, the household staff immediately came out to assist. Meanwhile, JK's car entered the house's driveway. He had just returned from his busy schedule. When he saw Lisa bringing out the intoxicated Yin from the car, he looked immediately confused. What happened? Yin got drunk at the nightclub tonight, and I brought her home. The household staff helped carry Yin inside the house. JK quickly followed with a worried expression. They took Yin to her bedroom. Upon arriving in the bedroom, Yin was still rambling, and her words were filled with confusion. I, I don't want to see, JK again, I don't want to go home. JK looked devastated hearing Yin's words, he tried to calm her down. Yin, I'm sorry. But Yin just kept rambling. 
All this time, all this time, I only feel humiliated in front of you. Yin's confession pierced JK's heart. He never imagined that Yin felt so humiliated in their relationship. JK felt guilty and didn't know how to soothe Yin's feelings at this moment.